Hi there, it's Ben Hassel, and in this introduction to Final Cut Pro, we're going to run through how you import, edit, make adjustments, and then export out your project in Final Cut Pro. This tutorial is designed to quickly introduce you to Final Cut Pro, so we'll be running through things and skipping over some details, but you can always refer back to some of my other videos or drop me a question below if you have any questions that pop up. Basically, by the end of this video, you'll be able to create a project that you can upload to YouTube, to Instagram, to other online platforms, or that you can export to DVD, and you'll have the core skills that you need to do that. So when you want to start a new edit in Final Cut Pro, the first thing you'll need to do is make a new library. Now the library is going to contain all your media, all your image files, all your audio that you're collecting into Final Cut Pro to put into your project, so to put into your project edit timeline. So I've got a library up here, and this is where you'll see your libraries set up. Um, and if you don't see the same screen layout as me, or you've adjusted it in Final Cut Pro, then just go to Window, Workspaces, and Default, um, and that will reset the default layout. You can see here that if we flip between the different workspace layouts, we can always jump back to the default layout, which means that we're all looking at the same thing here. And we'll bring up things like effects and transitions as we move through this tutorial. So essentially, the first place we're going to start is right up here on the top left where we're looking at our library. So we might see a list of uh, different library projects down here. You can have more than one library open at a time, although I'd recommend that you try to keep that to a minimum because every time you open up Final Cut Pro, it will read those libraries. And it's also not a good idea to store lots of edits or lots of different things that you're working on in one library to keep them separate. So every time I start something new in Final Cut Pro, I will close the library I'm working on. So I'm right clicking and closing this library and we're going to go ahead and create a brand new library. The other reason for doing this is that Final Cut Pro in its default library, when you kind of first fire up the software, will store the library on your hard drive in the movies folder, in your home folder. And that's not always the easiest place to find stuff. So when you're first starting out, you might want to save stuff to the desktop and move it around later. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go to file, new and library, and we're going to create a new library called Introduction to Final Cut Pro. We'll press save and that saved our library. Now we've not created a new timeline or anything like that. We just basically created a, a library where we can start to import media. So let's go ahead and do that. So if you've put a camera card into the SD card slot or plugged in your camera into Final Cut Pro, then the import window should pop up. So here we're going to click on import media. And there's a couple of different places you can access this import media window from. So one is file, import and media. The other is the little arrow to import media, which disappears once we've actually imported some media. Now we're going to go ahead and jump into this Mexico 2017 folder. We're just going to grab a few project files from here. So once we're in here, we can move through these folders and make selections for clips that we want to import. So I'm just going to grab a selection of clips here by holding down the shift key to select a list of clips. Um, I can also remove clips from those selections by holding down the command key, which is just to the left of your spacebar key. And we can remove clips from that selection if we have clips that we don't want to import. And then we can go ahead and import those. Now, before we import them, and we're just going to have a look at some of the options on the right hand side here. So we're going to add them to an existing event. And um, so basically Final Cut Pro by default puts today's date um, on the event, or we can create a new event if we want to add them to a specific event. Now this new event would be contained in the existing library that we have open or another library that we have open. We'll stick to the add to existing event. You don't really need to change that for the moment. At the moment I've got leave files in place selected, but I'd recommend that when you're starting out at Final Cut Pro that you copy those clips to the library. It's going to make moving your library files around a lot easier. And also one thing you want to think about when you're creating your library and saving it, especially if you're not working on your own computer. So that might be if you're a student at a college or university, you might be working on the college computer. You want to make sure that you know where those projects are saved and also be aware that the tech guys that set up those computers might wipe the desktops or the desktops might be set up on a network, which is going to make editing slow. So I would recommend buying an external hard drive to edit with, particularly if you're working on a college computer that you can save your projects to. Otherwise, you're going to find either editing slow or somebody's going to wipe your files in your project from the computer. So keep things backed up, which means keeping a couple of copies of the same project and then also make sure that you know where your projects are stored. Now, these options down here, we're not going to assign any roles or any keywords for the moment. And then under transcoding, this is a useful option. If you're working on an older laptop, then working with proxy media is a really useful thing to do. And creating optimized media 
is useful to do as well. It means that you can move through your footage a lot more easily um, with optimized media rather than with the original footage. So we've got our selection, we've set up our settings here and you can basically copy the settings that I've got on this right hand side and then we'll do import selected which is going to import those files into Final Cut Pro 10. So now we can see little bits of the interface coming alive. So on the top left here, we have our library and with smart collections and the events, and that's what this little starred folder is. And then just to the right of that, we have the browser, which allows us to move through and scrub through our footage. I'm just gonna turn scrubbing back on. So on the right in the middle here, we have scrubbing and audio scrubbing. I'll leave audio scrubbing off, otherwise we're gonna get lots of little bits of sound popping up. And so now when we hover over these clips, we're gonna see a preview of the clips in our viewer in the middle here. So we don't have an edit timeline yet and that's really what the, the next thing we're, that we're gonna go ahead and do. So once we've got our clips up here, we can click here to create a new project. Obviously once you've created a project timeline, then you won't see this. So you can also access file, new and project up here. So the project is your timeline essentially, and that's where you're gonna edit and create your final video. So we'll call this Edit San Pancho which is the location, and we'll leave it at 1080p, 1920 by 1080 and 30 frames per second. And we can also use the automatic settings um, for our video edit. Now, if you're working on a slower computer, you might wanna drop down your format to 720p. It's still gonna give you a good high quality resolution depending on what you're editing, but it will mean your computer runs a lot faster. Working in 1080p and certainly in 4K and 5K is gonna really challenge some older Macs. So if you're working on a 2011, 2012 laptop to edit HD with, then you notice things slowing down. First of all, try proxy edits, and then maybe drop the resolution down, which is gonna make rendering out effects and other things a bit quicker. Normally you wanna work in 1080p though, which is what this footage is shot at. And we're rendering Apple ProRes 422, which is fine, and um, it's a good quality codec to render in and then our audio is gonna be stereo and 48 kilohertz. So we don't need to change anything here. Um, if you want to, you can just use the automatic settings and set the edit based on the first clip. So we'll click OK here. And one other thing to say about the resolution that you set your project up at is that at a later stage, you can always drop that resolution. So if you want a smaller file to upload or to share online, and it's taking a long time to upload your footage, you can always drop that resolution down. So it's sometimes better to edit in full HD if you can, and then drop the resolution down when you come to uploading. So the first thing we can do is drop a clip onto the timeline. So we'll just grab this first one and you can see we've begun our edit. So now when we've had, we have clips on the timeline, essentially this is the edit that when we hit export that we'd be exporting. So we can drag down a few different clips. And when you're dragging down clips, there's a couple of options here. So we can drag clips down to the end of our edit, or we can drop them in between clips. And you'll see with the magnetic timeline that the rest of the timeline will kind of bump out of the way depending on where you want to drop that. When we see this white icon here, it means we're going to replace that clip. So normally when you're starting out editing, you probably won't want to use the replace option. You'll want to just be dropping the clips in place on the timeline. Now with three clips on the timeline, we can begin to edit and trim those clips and kind of think about how we modify those clips on the timeline. So the first thing to note is that we can highlight a clip and then using the backspace key, we can delete it and that will remove it from the timeline and everything will slide back. So you can see if I do edit and undo, then we've put that clip back in. If we press delete or forward delete on the keyboard, it's gonna remove that clip, but it's gonna leave a slug in place. So it's gonna keep the timing of those subsequent clips, but leave a slug in place there. I'm gonna do Command and Z or Edit Undo again. And so we can select any one of the clips that we have here, and you can see the scrubbing um, is meaning we're kind of jumping around here um, in the viewer. So I'm gonna turn that off for the moment so things aren't flashing around on screens quite so much. It's gonna help us to focus on things. So once we've got the timeline set up, we've got a few things that are worth mentioning here. So what we see in the timeline here is this red playhead. We can move that around. Okay. If we come up to the middle here, we can hit the play button and it's going to play our video. And you can see some sound popping up here, but I've got it turned down so that it doesn't 
get noisy behind my voice. If we press the pause button, it's going to pause that video. And obviously we can drag back to a different spot in the video as well. So that's how to play through your timeline, how to move around your timeline quickly. We can also zoom in and out of the timeline. Now the zoom controls are across here on the right hand side. So if I press this little thumbnail, I can increase the height of my clips, which is useful sometimes if you're editing to an audio track to see the audio waveforms. We can also change the view options. So I can't remember which is the default option, but you might see something different to mine, but we can move through these different view options to see just audio, to see audio and video and in different mixes, or to see just a very thin strip of track, which is useful if you're working with a lot of layers of video. So I'm gonna use this fourth clip display option. And as I mentioned before, we can increase the height. We can also zoom in and out of the timeline here as well. Now, if you're using a trackpad, you can pinch on the trackpad to zoom in and out as well. If you're just using a regular keyboard, you can use command plus and minus, and it will zoom in on the playhead. And we also have, if we zoom in, then these scroll bars for scrolling around our edit as well. And we also have the the hand tool, which I find super useful, which in here in our tools on the left allows us to just kind of drag around the timeline without moving clips around. So we can't select a clip with the hand. It's kind of a nice non-destructive way of working. And then we can jump back to the selection tool when we want to select parts of our clip. Another useful shortcut here is Shift and Z, which allows you to zoom to the whole timeline. So basically here we can zoom to the entire timeline and that's going to allow us to see the entirety of our edit, whether we've got three clips as we do here or a hundred clips in our edit, we're going to see the entire timeline. So the main tool you're going to use um, is the select tool here as you start out. And one thing it allows you to do is to trim the clip. So if we play through here, um, we've got quite a long clip at the beginning of this and we can kind of see what he's doing after maybe two or three seconds. So I think just when he puts that meat onto the, the barbecue here, we're going to trim to that edit point. So I'm going to position my playhead. And what's important here is that um, once that goes on, so I'm looking for the drop of the, the chicken onto the barbecue or the, the meat. And once that's on there, then I'm going to make sure I've got snapping turned on. So this is highlighted blue here on the right hand side. And then I can come across my the out point of this clip. And you can see I get this symbol, which indicates that when I click now, and drag back, it's going to select the out point of that clip. And you can see that changing on the left hand side in my viewer. So now I can trim back. And I can trim at the beginning of the clip. So here, now, we've got some source. And obviously, the cut here shouldn't be to the logs, we're going to grab this clip at the end back. And we'll just cut in when he's going to grab the other piece of meat. So he's going to put one down and then pick one up. And we've got a nice little edit there that flows quite nicely. So from a videoing point of view, one thing you want to make sure when you're videoing is that you've got a nice coverage. So I've got a wide shot here and then a close up and then also a close up of the flames as well, which I might cut in there at some point. So we can trim the ends of our clips. And you can see that when I'm trimming, we kind of get this big black space on the left hand side, which will disappear if you do shift and Z, it's going to remove this. But essentially, when we trim from the beginning, the beginning of the clip is now here, it's just expanding this space to help us visually so things aren't jumping around too much. So if I drag from the end here, on this clip, you can see in the viewer, I'm seeing this preview of what's going to be the out point of that first clip or I'm seeing the preview of what's going to be the in point of that next clip. So I can decide where I want it to cut to as I'm editing here. So I'm just going to hit Shift and Z again. So that's the basics of editing. One thing to note when we're editing here is that we're editing 
in a non-linear editor, but it's also non-destructive as well. So we're not affecting these original clips. These remain intact. And what you can see up here in the viewer, these orange bars is the selection that we have on the timeline. So those are the bits of the clip that are being used on the timeline. So if we jump ahead here and I'm going to turn scrubbing back on here now. So on the right hand side, you can see we can make a selection of a clip as well up here. So I can drag in these yellow bars and there's some shortcuts we can use for this as well. So if I'm hovering over part of the clip, I can press O to mark an out point and you can see that yellow selection moves or I can press I to mark an in point. And we can use those in the browser here, but also down on the timeline. So now if I click and drag, instead of dragging down the whole clip, as I did before, I'm just dragging down that selection of that clip. So a couple other things that we'll run through in this quick intro. So we can make selections up here and we can drag them down to the timeline and we can also trim our clips on the timeline too. And then we can use the play button here or the space bar to play through our clip and the space bar will also pause our clip as well. We can move around with the playhead and that's really the, the kind of fundamentals of moving clips around on the timeline. We also know that we can delete clips. We can add other clips as well as connected clips too. So for instance, if we needed the audio from these guys talking, um, but we wanted to cut to a picture of a wave above them, then we can drop a clip in a layer above. So you can see now we've got a connected clip up there um, and I'm going to zoom out so I can come up here to zoom out so I can see the end of that clip or I can use command and minus um, or pinch on the, the trackpad and then I can trim that clip down and this is what's called a cutaway in Final Cut Pro so we might have some narrative from these guys then we cut to the wave breaking and then we cut back to them and then what you'll see is when we move clips around that connected clip is connected to this specific clip. So when we move the dog video here, for instance, to the end, the clip moves with that other clip. So we can stack up our layers. And this is also the same way that we can add audio to our edit. So I've got a few audio tracks up here that I can use. So I'm gonna jump into my audio and then we'll go into sound effects and none of these quite match. I've got water ocean pier, that'll work. So if I drag this down, now you can see I've got this sound effect below that. So that could be a, a music track or another audio track that you add below uh, your clip. So if you don't want the audio from your original video to interfere with the audio track you're adding, so if it's a music video for instance, then we can drop down the audio levels for these clips here. So just by hovering over this middle bar, we can drop down those audio levels. So now by going to minus infinity, which you can see there in the little black box that's popped up, we basically remove the audio and we just have the audio from that water ocean pier um, track. So we can search in here as well. Oh yeah, we've got a beach with children track, so I can delete those clips in the same way. And when you're deleting a connected clip, what you'll have noticed is that when I delete it, it doesn't affect the timeline duration it's the connected clips behave slightly differently so let's drag this one down so now you can see we've got our audio meters here and if you want to see these audio meters a bit larger we can click here and it will pop up on the right hand side so we've got quite a low sound mix there just kind of a background track we've got our video playing if we want to cut the audio track here then we could use another tool which we haven't mentioned yet which is the blade tool and we can just slice there. It's gonna create a slug to connect that second track to. And then I'm gonna grab the selection tool and just delete both of those. So now we have a very short edit of these different clips, but that's basically the nuts and bolts of how to move things around technically in Final Cut Pro on the timeline. And essentially we have something that's ready here that we can export. So one thing that we can also add in here as well before we export is some effects and perhaps also um, some transitions. So if we wanna add transitions, we can come to our transitions across on the right-hand side. So we're looking at skimming and snapping, and we also have transitions here on the right-hand side. So the default transition that a lot of people use will be the cross dissolve. And so if we go into dissolves, we can see that, and we can drag that onto our edit points. 
So essentially we're dragging the dissolve onto the edit point. So once we've got that on there, we can play through that and you can see it dissolves from one clip to another. I tend to try not to use too many dissolves, but they can be useful in some parts of an edit. We also have some other transitions that we can use. So for instance, a drop-in transition. And so if we watch this back, uh, this drop-in is happening. And this drop-in effect has a little bit of smoke with it as well. So it's not really working here, but you can see it kind of has a puff of smoke that drops in when it plays back. Okay. To delete a transition, which we're going to do with this one, it's not quite the right one, we can highlight it and press the backspace key. And then we can choose other transitions as well. So for instance, a page curl transition will turn the page. Um, and then when we use that, it will have some options up here in the inspector. Now, if you don't see the inspector at the moment, just go to window, showing workspace and inspector, and you'll see that inspector popping up on the right hand side. So here with this effect, we can change which direction it's coming from, or we can have a custom direction, which will mean that we can, let's just bring this halfway through. We can change the, the way that it's turning. So you can see here, we switch the preset to custom, then we can change the direction in which that page is turning as well. We can also change the radius of the page turn as well. So we can have a bigger radius or a smaller radius. And then we can also change the color in the background. So we've got a few different options um, for some of the different effects or transitions um, that will pop up in the inspector. And the inspector is also useful for working on clips. So you can see when I click on a clip here, I have things like the transform options. So the scale, if you need to increase the size of your footage, um, the crop and the distort. So that's how to add transitions just by dragging them from the transitions here, or you can highlight an edit point like this and then just double click and it will add that transition in there. You can see that's added in there now. Um, and again, with things like the push, we're going to get options for left to right, top to bottom, up there in the inspector. So the other thing we want to mention here is the effects. So if we jump into the effects panel on the right hand side here, we'll go for a basic color effect. So we'll colorize one of our clips. So let's drag this onto the ocean picture. And you can see that we get this colorize effect here. And again, if we highlight it, we get some options up in the inspector for mapping things to different colors. So you can see we can get some cool effects here on our video it's starting to look a bit psychedelic now so we're basically mapping the blacks here and the whites here to to different colors and we can increase or decrease the intensity um, of that color adjustment depending on what we want the main point being is that to add an effect even something like a blur we could grab a gaussian blur drag it onto a clip and then it's going to add that blur in there so for something like a blur we can also do things like keyframing our clips as well so if we want to begin with a blur and then come into focus we can add keyframes um, for this effect so you can see up here in the inspector for the blur we've got the amount of blur that we're going to add we don't need to change the horizontal or vertical blur boost or anything like that and um, we can add a keyframe partway through our clip. So I've moved the playhead partway through our clip and then clicked on the amount there. And then I'm going to bring my clip, my playhead back to the beginning. So importantly, I've got my clip selected and then I can add another keyframe. And then on that second keyframe, so at the moment I haven't changed the blur amount. I've just added a couple of keyframes on the second keyframe, which I can get to by clicking this little arrow so you can see I get a little forward and backwards arrow and I want to come to the last keyframe and then remove that blur so essentially what we're getting here now is blurred and then pulled into focus and then some transitions we've got some color effects in there some page turns in our transitions and a variety of different video effects in there so we've covered quite a lot in this short tutorial introduction to Final Cut Pro 10. The last thing we're going to do here is just have a look at how we export out our video. So we're going to go to the export button um, up here at the top. So make sure you've got 
this sequence selected. So that means having the playhead active or making sure that you have it selected in the project here. And you can see if we select the project timeline that we're editing, we get some information about that project up here as well. So let's go ahead and export. So we're going to click on the export button up here, although we can go to file and share up here as well. So the button on the top right is called the share button. And you can see here that when we hit the share button, we get some options for sharing to a DVD. Obviously you need a DVD burner on your computer, which most new Macs don't have, but you can still buy them. And we can export out the master file, which is what we're going to do. We can all also export out to YouTube, to Vimeo, to other sites. I prefer to use the uploader for these sites. They seem a bit more reliable than the built-in uploader from within Final Cut Pro 10. That's my, my preference. I'm normally exporting out using the master file option here. So we'll click on master file and we've got some information about our video, the duration of it, and then also um, we can change the settings. And actually there's one thing I should mention before we export it out. So I'm just going to cancel out of here briefly. When we are working our video um, in the middle here, we see the time code. So the duration of our, of our final video. So you can see, this two seconds and eight frames that we have here in yellow um, is the selection of the first clip. And you'll see that change as you select each clip, that number is changing. So most of my clips here are around two seconds. And then that's over the complete duration of this project, which is 14 seconds long. So a pretty short edit that we have here. If you have something that's a minute long, there'll be another number in front of there. So the time code that we see here in the middle is in hours, minutes, seconds and frames. So let's go back to the export button and back to the master file. So in here we are exporting out this project. We'll go into the settings um, and here we've got some options for exporting out video and audio which will export out a QuickTime movie um, either in the current Apple ProRes codec, or if you're uploading more usefully the H.264 codec. If you're uploading to YouTube or to Instagram, then you actually need to change this to computer to export out this MPEG-4 movie format. So I tend to export out all my videos in this MPEG-4 movie format. And I think at the moment it seems like it's rendering more quickly on YouTube when I do export out the MPEG-4. You can see the, the size estimate of my video is going to be 35.8 megabytes. Um, the resolution and as I mentioned before we can drop down the resolution here if we want to so we can save out a lower resolution version which is really useful if you need to upload something quickly to share privately with someone online when you want to get a client to review a video or something like that so the full resolution we have here and then these lower resolutions that we can also export out so we'll stick with the full resolution and then we'll press next Final Cut Pro is going to ask us where we want to save it. And if you don't see, um, if you don't see this bigger window where we can navigate through our folders on the left hand side, then you just need to click this little arrow on the right hand side, but we're going to save that to the desktop and we can also access the desktop from this list down here too. I'm going to leave this in the expanded view and then we're going to go ahead and click save. So now that's exporting out. If we come up to the top left, we can see the progress of that share. So I can open up the sharing option here and you can see that it's sharing out. And also one thing that did happen while we were working on our edit before was that when we added effects or transitions, Final Cut Pro was rendering. And if you need to see the progress of a bigger render, then you can come up into this background task window as well to see how things are rendering out. So once that's disappeared from this list, we'll come to our desktop. So I'm using the command and the tab key to move between my applications here. So holding down command and tapping tab will move me to the finder and I'm going to click go. I'm going to go to my desktop and in here you can see we've got the final exported video. Um, if we double click on it, it's going to open it in QuickTime player and we can play this through. So you can see we've got a nice good quality video that we can upload with some crazy effects and transitions.
some beautiful people and a very cute dog. So that's the end of this tutorial. This video will be perfect to upload. I hope that's all been useful information for you for running through from importing to editing and then exporting out your video. There's certainly a lot more to cover in Final Cut Pro 10, but I wanted to give you this quick intro. If you have any questions, just shoot me an email and I'll either have a video that I've already made that I'll send you a link to, um, or I'll create a new video um, if the questions are a good one that I think will apply to other people as well. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you on the next tutorial.